During the 1970s, if you had no car, it was no problem. All you had to do was stick out your thumb and wait for a kind stranger to pull over and offer you a ride. For a free spirit, hitchhiking may have been the best option when your own two feet couldn't get you there. Since the 1970s, hitchhiking has been declining for a number of reasons, with safety being at the top of the list. Movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and real-life crime stories that occurred during the 70s had people looking for other ways to get around. Saturday morning was supposed to be about eating sugary cereals and watching cartoons with no educational value. But Schoolhouse Rock tricked us by teaching us multiplication, history, and the differences between conjunctions and interjections. Thanks to their catchy songs, those watching knew all about the different branches of government and how a bill becomes a law without ever cracking open a book. Everything about the strange case of Patty Hearst, the granddaughter of publishing titan William Randolph Hearst, was like something out of a Hollywood movie, and many of us couldn't get enough. It started with her 1974 kidnapping, and then, even more shockingly, her new identity as Tanya, joining forces with her captors to rob banks around San Francisco. As it played out on TV, it had all of us wondering, is this really happening? In the 1970s, opening a soda or beer can required pulling a ring that tore open a small wedge shape on the top of an aluminum can. Then the ring would be thrown away, usually on the ground where somebody could step on it. Injuries from those metal tabs became a nationwide epidemic that had many of us wearing shoes to walk along the beach. The metal pull tabs began being phased out by the early 1980s, following the invention of the Easy Open Stay Tab. Television programming during the 1970s wasn't available around the clock. At some point during the night, stations would sign off and use a test pattern graphic to signify they were off air. Occasionally, they might use something more patriotic, like the American flag, but generally, that was the only viewing option for late night viewers until around 6 a.m. Men and women in the 1970s were big on tight fitting shirts, but more importantly, it had to have the largest and floppiest collars possible. These collars were double the size of a standard collar and were often accompanied by an exposed hairy chest. This style could be found on shirts, leisure suits, and even jackets of the era. And if you did have a jacket on, you would make sure to flip the shirt collar to the outside of the jacket for an even more fashion forward look. Sideburns were a popular counterculture style during the 1950s and 1960s in direct response to the carefully groomed hairstyles of the greatest generation. But it wasn't until the late 60s and into the 70s that the masses grew them out to Civil War era proportions. Men like Richard Roundtree, Burt Reynolds, and Elvis Presley made wearing huge mutton chops an iconic 1970s look. Much like wallpaper from the 1970s, upholstery tended to be big, bright, and bold. Sofas during this decade were busy with floral patterns that used browns, oranges, and greens in every shade. These eye-catching living room centerpieces were in nearly every home of the day and fit right in with the wood paneling and shag carpet to give the room that classic 1970s feel. The 1973 oil crisis hit wallets hard, and as fueling larger cars became more and more expensive, Americans switched to compact cars like the Ford Pinto, the AMC Gremlin, and the AMC Pacer. Despite getting better gas mileage, all three cars were terribly ugly. Luckily, it didn't take the car makers long to realize their mistakes, and all three vehicles stopped production by 1980.
The disco era was short-lived, but left an indelible mark on the 1970s with its music and fashion. What started in the clubs of New York City spread to all parts of the country when the movie Saturday Night Fever was released. The film brought disco to the masses and had many singing catchy tunes by ABBA, Donna Summer, The Village People, and The Bee Gees. Running around naked in public was one of the biggest and strangest trends of the 1970s. The attention-grabbing behavior swept across America, especially during sporting events and on college campuses, and really peaked by the mid-70s. The craze led to tons of novelty products hitting the market, like gag gifts and t-shirts, and it also inspired comedy songs like The Streak by Ray Stevens. During the 70s, when neighbors went on vacation, there was a good chance that when they got home, you would be invited over to sit in the living room as they loaded slides into a carousel projector and then clicked through pictures of their entire trip. As they told painstakingly boring stories about each photo, all you could think about was the dust floating through the projector light or the occasional upside down slide. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.